If you're eating less, walking more, maybe even trying intermittent fasting. But the fat around your midsection still won't budge you. Re not lazy. You're not undisciplined. And you're definitely not broken. What's happening is that your body is protecting you. It's holding on to fat because a powerful survival hormone is telling it to. That hormone is cortisol. When cortisol stays elevated, your metabolism doesn't just slow down. It starts to unravel. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how that happens, and then I'll give you a clear step-by-step -step plan to calm cortisol, protect your thyroid, and finally shift your body from fat storing mode to fat, burning mode without starving, or killing yourself in the gym. Very quickly, here's the big picture. Your thyroid is the engine that sets the pace of your metabolism. It gets worse. Elevated cortisol also turns down TSH thyroid, stimulating hormone, the master signal from your brain that tells your thyroid to make more hormone. So now you're producing less, converting less, and blocking what little you have left. And as a final twist of the knife, cortisol ramps up a process called gluconeogenesis. That's your body breaking down your own muscle tissue and converting it into sugar. Blood sugar rises, insulin spikes, and now you're storing fat while losing muscle, the very tissue that keeps your metabolism humming. That's why so many people say, I'm doing what used to work, but now I'm gaining fat and losing energy. You're not failing. You're trapped in a cortisol-driven feedback loop. What pushes cortisol up and keeps it there? Chronic stress, poor sleep, under-eating, over-training, heavy stimulant use, chaotic schedules, and that constant on-edge feeling where your brain never shuts off. The solution is not to push harder, it's to get your rhythm back. When you send the right safety signals, your body stops clinging and starts releasing. Here's how to do it in six practical steps you can start today. Step one, reset your circadian rhythm. Your body runs on light. Within 30 to 60 minutes of waking, get natural daylight into your eyes. Five to 10 minutes is enough. If it's still dark, turn on bright indoor lights and step outside as soon as you can. This simple habit anchors your body clock, shapes your cortisol curve for the day, and supports healthy TSH signaling. You'll notice you feel more awake in the morning, less wired at night, and your hunger patterns become more predictable instead of random. Step two, protect your adrenals in the morning. If you're already stressed and tired, pouring black coffee onto an empty stomach is like stepping on the gas when the engine oil is low. For many people, that amplifies jitters, crashes, and mid-morning sugar cravings. The fix is simple. Either delay caffeine an hour, or pair your coffee with food. And if your body feels depleted, don't skip breakfast. A protein-forward first meal tells your system, we're safe, we have fuel, we don't need an emergency stress response. You'll see in a minute exactly how to build that breakfast. Step three, support your thyroid nutritionally. Your thyroid can't convert T4 to T3 efficiently without the right raw materials. Two Brazil nuts a day provide selenium the cofactor that helps that conversion happen. Add zinc from pumpkin seeds, beef or shellfish. Get iodine in its natural context from seaweed rather than blasting it with high-dose supplements. It's too much iodine can backfire for some people. Build meals around whole protein, colorful produce, herbs, and mineral-rich foods. Think salmon with lemon and a big salad, eggs cooked in olive oil with spinach and tomatoes, Greek yogurt with chia and berries. These aren't tea magic foods. They re a steady drip of the building blocks your thyroid and liver need to do their job. Step four, protect lean muscle with resistance training. Muscle is your metabolic engine and your insulin sink. When cortisol is high, your body is more likely to break muscle down to make sugar. The way you stop that is by giving your system a clear signal to keep muscle. Two or three short sessions a week are enough, 10 to 20 minutes. Do pushes, pulls, squats, or hinges, and a plank. Keep it simple. Push-ups on a counter, body weight squats, rows with a band, hip hinges, farmer carries. You're not trying to destroy yourself. You're reminding your body, we use this tissue. Don't burn it for fuel. Step five, rethink fasting. Intermittent fasting can be a useful tool, but tools can hurt if you use them at the wrong time. If your thyroid is suppressed and cortisol is high, aggressive fasting often backfires energy tanks, sleep suffers, and cravings explode. Start with a gentle 12-hour overnight fast finished dinner by 8. Eat breakfast at 8. Let your body adapt. 
Once your energy and sleep improve, you can experiment with a slightly longer fast if you want to, but don't force it. Fat loss works best when your nervous system feels safe. Step six, downshift cortisol at night. Your evenings are where fat loss is won or lost because cravings peak and discipline fades. Two things help, light and the nervous system. First, dim the lights after sunset. Overhead brightness tells your brain it's still daytime. Soft lamps signal wind down mode. Second, use a quick neurological reset before bed. Here's a simple one. Gently press your tongue against the inside of your left cheek for 10 seconds and the right cheek for 10 seconds and repeat four or five times. It sounds strange, but it engages cranial nerves that nudge your body toward the parasympathetic rest and repair state. Pair that with slow nasal breathing for seconds in, six seconds out for two minutes. You'll feel your heartbeat slow and your mind quiet. Better sleep tonight means lower cortisol and steadier hormones tomorrow. Now, let's turn these steps into a day you can actually live with. Think of your routine in three parts, morning reset, daytime momentum, and evening calm. Your morning reset looks like this. Wake, get light. Drink a big glass of water with a pinch of salt or a squeeze of lemon. Move gently for five minutes, then eat a protein first breakfast. Aim for 25 to 35 grams of protein. Try Greek yogurt with chia and cinnamon, eggs with avocado and greens, or a protein smoothie with spinach and a handful of berries. If you love coffee, have it with or after this meal, then walk for five to 10 minutes. That tiny walk is one of the most powerful insulin tools on earth. Your muscles soak up glucose, so your body doesn't need a big insulin push. Daytime momentum is all about stable energy. First, step sad, about 2,000 more than your current baseline. If you're at 4,000, go to six. Break them into micro walks after meals and during calls. Second, keep lunch protein anchored and sequence your food wisely. Vegetables or salad first, protein next, starch last. Same calories, calmer insulin. Great plate examples. Chicken thigh salad with olive oil and potatoes at the end. Salmon with broccoli and a small serving of rice after you've eaten most of your protein. Tofu stir-fry loaded with nan starchy vegetables and beans. Third, make snacks protein plus. Greek yogurt with cinnamon. Cottage cheese with berries, jerky with carrots. Edamame, apple with peanut butter. If you want something sweet, Pair it with protein and have it after a meal, not on an empty stomach. Hydration keeps the system smooth. Water is your default. Add sparkling water with lemon, herbal tea, or a light electrolyte if you sweat a lot. If you drink zero-calorie sodas, anchor them to meals so your brain doesn't expect sweetness all day long. Evening calm starts with light. Turn down the brightness in your home, switch screens to night mode, and give yourself a landing strip before bed. Build dinner just like lunch protein first, vegetables second, carbs last. You can absolutely enjoy carbs. Timing and order are the trick. If cravings hit after dinner, do a five minute stroll and brush your teeth. That kitchen close signal is powerful. If you truly need a snack, make it protein plus and small. Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, or a scoop of protein in almond milk with cinnamon. Here's a simple seven day plan to put this into motion without overwhelm. Days one and two, focus only on the morning reset. Light, water, protein, first breakfast, short walk. Days three and four, add lunch sequencing and a five minute walk after your two biggest meals. Days five and six, layer the evening dim lights, protein first dinner, short walk, kitchen closed, and the two minute nervous system downshift before bed. Day seven, evaluate. Is your waist less puffy in the morning? Are cravings down? Is your afternoon energy steadier? If two out of three improved, repeat the week exactly as is. If not, keep the routine and add 10 grams of protein per meal, plus one extra micro walk each day. Let me answer a few common questions that come up right away. First, do I have to cut all carbs? Oh, you're going to use carbs strategically. Eat protein and vegetables first, have starch last, and do a short walk after meals. You'll be shocked how much better your body handles the exact same food. Second, what about fasting if I feel good? If your energy and sleep are solid and cravings are low, 
A slightly longer overnight fast can be fine, but if you're dragging or snapping at people by noon, pull it back. Fat loss is harder when your nervous system is in fight or flight. Third, what if I can't work out? Muscle signals don't require a full gym session. 10 minutes of simple movement squats to a chair, wall push-ups, band rows, and a plank. Send the message your body needs to keep muscle and burn fat instead. Here's the recap so it sticks. High cortisol blocks T4 to T3 conversion, raises reverse T3, suppresses TSH, drives gluconeogenesis, breaking down muscle and spiking insulin. That cocktail pushes your body into fat storage even when you're trying hard. You break that loop by restoring rhythm. Daylight in the morning, water first, protein first meals, short post-meal walks, two to three brief resistance sessions per week, dim lights at night, and a quick nervous system downshift before bed. Layer in thyroid-friendly nutrients like selenium from two Brazil nuts, zinc from whole foods, and iodine from seaweed in sensible amounts. Keep carbs, but sequence them. Keep coffee, but time it. Keep life, but lower the spikes. Your body isn't fighting you, it's protecting you. When you send the right signals of safety, the protection ends and healing begins. That's when your energy returns, your cravings settle, and your waistline finally moves. Start this tomorrow morning. Give it seven honest days. You'll feel the difference before you see it, and then the mirror and the tape measure will catch up. If this helped you, hit like and subscribe to From Heavy to Healthy for Simple. science back steps that actually work in real life. Drop a comment with which step you're starting today. Morning light. Protein first meals or the nighttime reset and then watch the next video. I've linked on the morning insulin trick that pairs perfectly with this plan. Let's get you out of survival mode and into fat burning mode without the burnout.